You have heard my word many times. You have heard my scriptures speak to your hearts. And yet you have heard this one over and over. But I say to you today, it shall be alive in your hearing. For I, the Lord, will send you help from the sanctuary. Yes, I say I will send you help from the sanctuary, from the holy place of my habitation. I have sent out international angels, heavenly hosts that will begin to make you strong again. For my people and my church, those of a remnant, have been in a severe testing and trial. For I have been preparing them for eternal things to come. And many would say, Lord, why, why, why? But I am saying that I am preparing you for an eternal weight of glory. That blows me away. So that when you put on the robe of righteousness and stand before my son, that you will know that truly you have done well. That you will not think you got in by the skin of your teeth, but you will know that you served the king well. You know that you overcame. For did not my son say seven times in the great revelation to John that those who overcome, 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 shall they not rule and reign with me? Is this not your destiny? Is this not what each and every one of you are called to be and to do? So I'm telling you today that help from the sanctuary is being sent to you right now. That the journey will get easier and that the battle, though it may rage upon this earth, that you will be strong and glorious, that you will be filled with might, that you will be filled with great faith, for truly my spirit has chosen each and every one of you to be overcomers. But this is not automatic. This is not something that just happens. This is something that is the outpouring of your continual fight. And did not Paul say to you, fight the good fight of faith? I am strengthening your arms today. I am strengthening your feeble knees. For some of you today, those sins that have easily beset you are being removed. They're being pushed away. For I, the Lord God, have chosen you as a special people. This is Jubilee. I have chosen you as a treasured people. But more than that, I have chosen you to be a feared people. And the fear of my name will fall upon my church again. And this earth and its inhabitants will know that I have rose up mightily among my own. O gathering, O jubilee, says the Lord, be strong in this hour. Do not shrink back from the trials, but face off with the adversary, knowing that I, the Lord, are raising your arms like Moses when Ur and Aaron lifted up his arms. Today, my angelic hosts are lifting up your arms. They're beginning to do things that you cannot do on your own. They're beginning to bring reconciliation and restoration. You will see a sweeping across America in the next three years. You will see staggering, staggering issues challenging lives. You will see great devastation upon your land and many foreign lands. For the wrath of God is beginning in the earth against the unjust, against those who refuse my good news. But my people, you are in a safe place. You are in a very, very safe place with me. You must not fear the upheaval of nations. You must not fear the moving of nations into the Middle East. You must not fear what is going to happen upon Israel. You must not fear what will happen to America. For in the midst of chaos, I, the Lord, rule. I rule in the midst of downturns. I rule in the midst of trials. For my people are special, and you must understand that I chose you above others. That when you responded to my son's atonement, that I made a special compact with you, a covenant that cannot be broken. This is not your hour of defeat, but this is your hour to rise up and be strong. Like a great shipmast in the midst of a terrible storm, shall you be unwavered and unmoving. And I will pilot each and every one of you as you surrender to the working of my spirit. As you decree today, 
Do you not believe that I have all these things for you? But you must be an obedient people to me. You must not give place to lip service. The things that I say in my word, you must do in this hour. Never forget my throne of grace. Even in your rebellion, my throne of grace will give you mercy and empower you to become those of a glorious nature. The Lord says, stop being distracted. I want distractions put away from each of you. For some of you, it's the amount of time you spend in things that are not eternal. Look at your lives, children, today. My Father is preparing great crowns of rewards. And very, very soon, I will be your soon coming king. But for some of my people, the day will catch them unaware, and they will not be prepared. And they will be like a man who went on a journey without food, without clothing, and came into a storm and suffered great loss. You must hear me, my children, for my spirit beckons each of you now. This is not a time any longer to give me 50%. You must give me 100, for you are called to be overcomers. You have been destined by my Father to sit with me, excuse me, to sit with the 24 elders and make great decisions and heavenly strategies in the new earth and heaven to come. Do you not see that you are called to things beyond this limitation on earth? Come on, my people. You must see into a new dimension. You must look beyond your trials and your problems. And the Lord says you must no longer be complainers like Israel. For the Lord says this world will devour the complainers. But those who are clothed with the fire of my spirit, they cannot be consumed. They cannot be moved and shaken. Soon you will begin to understand the very power of your worship and how it shatters spiritual realms and breaks principalities' backs. For great darkness has been sent upon your land. For those in high civil authorities have given this nation over to the ways of darkness. But I, the Lord, will redeem my people. I did not come to redeem governments. I did not come to exalt nations. I came to covenant with the people that are called out. So be ye the called out ones, says the Lord. And make a fresh covenant with me today. Rend your hearts before me, all of you, regardless of how well you know me, or how long you've walked with me, or how deep you've gone with me, or how you've served me. This is a holy day, a holy day among you, that you will never forget as time progresses. As time begins to come faster and faster, you will look back on this day, the first day of this month, November. You will look back even as the clocks were changed and time began anew, and you will say, that was the day of a holy convocation, the day the Lord set me aside and chose me for a special work. Rend your heart, says the spirit of grace and supplication. The Lord says you have called times of prayer here. They must be adhered to by more and more. Some of you are ignoring the spirit of grace and you find excuses and alibis with which to avoid spiritual depth. But a great tide is coming, like a tidal wave that pulls people out to the seas. Some of my people will begin to be pulled out to the sea and never return to the depth of their first love. I don't want that to be me. I do believe in grace. But I believe the Bible says that grace was given that we might not sin. And you know, idolatry is sin. When we only give him 50% and he's given everything, that's idolatry. If we serve ourselves and not him, that's idolatry. And I know that prophets don't like to say in modern times that God's people have a problem with idolatry. I do. Sometimes my grandson is an idol to me. Sometimes I ignore the Holy Spirit to pray so I can play with my grandson. I'm hoping someday that the confession of my weaknesses will spur the people of God to move their hearts closer to him. Because I want to tell you something, whether you hear the rest of this or not. We've been sold a bill of goods about once saved, always saved. There are people that are going to never return to their first love. Jesus said to the Pharisees, you will die in your sin. He pronounced it to them clearly. You will die in sin. That's eternal. That's the second death. Do 
Do not ignore the beckoning of my spirit this day. This land is being weighed in the balances. There must be great prayer. Prophets have come to you and spoken that your prayers will dictate the next three years. It is time you become a serious people. For Satan has desired to send scorpions and demonic beings to bite the people of God, to get them to doubt my goodness through a lack of separation. This is a day of separation, says the Lord. I called you to be a sanctified people. Come out. Come out from this world and be separate. Set aside these things that trip you up and do the things that make your Lord a Lord of pleasure for you. A master who smiles when he looks upon you when you work. No, your work shall never, ever obtain your salvation. But your earthly works will determine the pleasure of the king and where you are in the midst of his presence. For some of you, the spirit of grace is saying, kneel. Others, he is saying to your hearts, lift your hands high and pledge your allegiance to the Lamb of God. Pledge your allegiance to the kingdom that comes. The Lord says, in three years you will see the upheaval of all nations. I'm either the biggest false prophet that ever lived or I'm the stupidest prophet to ever say that. The upheaval of all nations, all nations in three years. If you've studied end time Bible prophecies, you know exactly what that's pointing to. It has to be the return of Christ. In three years, you will see the upheaval of all nations, and you will see that even national names will be gone forever. They're about to wipe the name Syria off the face of the earth. Do you know that Assyria is one of the original nations of the world? It's about to disappear. Iraq is about to disappear, the land of Shinar. Some of you act as though these things can never happen in this modern era. But if you look back many times throughout the history of man, nations have lost their names, their influence. And these things are happening now, says the Lord. And you must be ready. And you must remember what Paul said to you, that having done all to stand, you must stand with your loins girded with truth. Do not let deception come. Do not buy into lies. Remember what my son said before he departed this earth to sit at the right hand of my glory. He said, beware and let no man deceive you. Guard your hearts, my children. Do well and cause your father to release a great smile of his pleasure upon you. Go before him this day without leaders, without worshipers, and tell him, these are my areas. These are my things. These are my fears. These are my failures. And he will raise you up. For in your humility, you shall be exalted. For in, the, for in the end of times, you will see the pride of man like never before. You will see the obstinance of men's heart, hearts, excuse me, contending for that which is bound for Gehenna. But for my people, as Isaiah prophesied, Arise and shine. 